We try to save ourselves from being in an uncomfortable situation, but that uncomfortable situation is there for you to develop and grow. And if you continue to save yourself from entering uncomfortable situations, now you lose out on opportunities to grow. Right, man. What up everybody, man, it's your boy JK, man, today is Thursday, so you already know what it is, it's Tackle Thursday. Live on IG, live on Facebook, and I'm recording for my YouTube channel, which y'all can go and subscribe to that. Like, follow, and subscribe um, on my YouTube channel, Jeremy Kellum. I don't do it right now. Make sure after this episode, y'all go and subscribe on my YouTube channel, man. Watch all the dope episodes, dope content. Um, vlogs or whatever it is, man. Um, y'all can check that out on my on, on my YouTube channel, man. And, and I appreciate y'all joining me today, man. Today we tackling the topic. And if you joining me for the first time, you watching Tackle Thursday for the first time, man. Man, it's the first Tackle Thursday of the new year. And so for Tackle Thursday, every single Thursday, man, we tackle. I tackle and I encourage you and I urge you to tackle the topic with me, man. We tackle certain topics. And so today's topic that we're talk tackling, man, is save it and lose it. Save it and lose it, right? Save it and lose it. Not save it or lose it. No, save it and lose it, right? And where I come from with, with save it and lose it, right? When you look at that title, it's like a, uh, an oxymoron a little bit, right? Because it kind of, it don't go together. It's like the opposite, right? Because if, if I seem, if I perceive something to be valuable, if I, if I, if I consider something to be valuable and I don't want to lose it, right? Um, I'm probably going to save it. I'm going to put it away. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to it. Why? Because whatever it is I want to say, or I don't want to lose, I'm going to try to save it. I'm going to try to do whatever I can to save it so I don't lose it, right? But Today, man, we tackling the topic, save it and lose it, meaning that I believe that there are some stuff, there are some things, um, whether it be tangible things or even intangible things in life, that if we try to save, we'll end up losing it. That, that, that is when we try to save some things, when we try to be kept them, save them in our lives or, or, or in areas of our lives and we try to hold on to things, what it is that we're trying to hold on, we end up losing it, right? We, we, we end up losing it. And, and, the, and the issue that, you know, what I think in life, man, sometimes we try to, we think it's best. Like I say, we try to hold on to things, thinking that that's what's best, when what's best is letting it go or, 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 or going on all out, right? Um, for instance, right, just coming from an athlete's point of view, right? One reason why I think that there are things in our lives where we try to save some things that we really need to let go or we try to hold on to some things um, that, that God may be telling us, hey, I need you to let go. Or I need you to invest. I need you to give to me or I need you to invest um, this money in your business or I need you to do X, Y, Z, right? We like to run from empty. We run from empty, right? If, if, if we're honest, whatever area of our lives, if we look at it, we run from empty. Think about, think about money. I don't know how much money anybody got right now, but if we look at our bank account, I don't think anybody want to go back to where they once were financially, right? And so we, 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 and so because we don't want to go back to where we once were, like my boy Rod Wave, I always say he don't want to, you know, he got a fear of being broke, going back broke, right? So sometimes before, because we don't want to go back to where we once were financially, we're a little bit more tighter with money, right? And, and, and so where there may be times or areas of our life where we need to invest, like God may be saying, hey, I need you to invest in a business. And you looking like, nah, I can't really invest right now because I'm not trying to go back to zero financially. Right? Or God may be saying, hey, I need you to give to me. I need you to, to, to give back to me. I bless you. I need you to. And, and we like, nah, I can't really give back to you because I don't want to go back to zero. Our fear of, 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 of going back to empty. And so as an athlete, when we used to condition and used to run, our coaches used to tell us, give it all you got on every single one. But if I knew we got 20 sprints, 21 tens, I might be coasting one to, one to 15. Because I know 
I'm trying to save myself so I don't burn out, right? I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to run. I'm trying to prevent myself from getting to empty. I don't want to get tired, right? And so what we don't realize is that sometimes we get so caught up on not wanting to get to empty that we forget that it's not all about trying to prevent ourselves from getting to empty. Like, like for conditioning. Everybody, you're going to get tired. So that's not the goal. The goal shouldn't be that I don't get tired. The goal should be how far can I go before I get tired? That, that should be the goal, right? Even, even like I'm, you know, in my own life, man, I'm looking at it and, uh, you know, just even like looking at it, I'm like, man, dang, you know what I'm saying? Every, you know, I want more money. I'm trying to get more money, right? And I'm like, man, okay, uh, a guy has blessed me to be in a better position. Uh, to make more money, right? And, and and you look, you know, you looking around, you're like, oh man, like I re I remember back. Okay, God ain't trying. To, I'm trying to hold on to this because I ain't trying to go back to where I once was, right? And and I get a little frustrated, like, oh man, what I'm doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to hold on, trying to grow this this money. And and God, like, He told me, like, He was like, man, you you keep focusing on not wanting to get to where you once were, but I need you to look at all that you're able to do now. He was like, you used to run low on money when you didn't have no kids, when you were single, when you was by yourself, right? And so look at your, look what you could do now with your money. You got a house, you got kids, you got a wife, you got different things that you're able to do. And so God was like, don't worry about getting to empty. Look how much you can do now before you get to empty. And that's the same thing like with conditioning, right? How you know that you're getting in better shape is that, it's not that I never get tired, but it's, it's that, hey, last week I only ran a mile and I was burnt out. I got tired. Now I run two miles before I get tired. You still get to empty, but now you ran further before you got tired. Right. And so we got to understand that, hey, it's not about running away from empty or trying to avoid empty or or trying to avoid getting low on your money. Like, no, don't get me wrong. No, we ain't trying to get low on your money. But but the point is, is that at one point in your life, you might have got low on your money or, or got tight on your money when it was only you. But now you've been blessed to be in a position to where you got, you, you might be married, you got kids, you got a mortgage, you got businesses. And though your money may get tight, look how much you can do because of how much you got now, even though you get back to that tight position, right? So, 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 so it's not about running away from empty, but how far can you go before you get to empty, right? And so the thing is, and, and, and like I say, and what we tackle in the topic is save it and lose it. It's just that when I say that we run away from empty, not only do we run away from empty, like not wanting to ever go broke again. Right. Um, but we run, we run away from empty in relationships, right? Like think about it's people that's trying to save their heart. They trying to save their heart from heartbreak. So when they get in a relationship, even if they in a relationship, even if they in love, they've been with a person for so long, they still trying to save their heart. Because they think that if I save my heart, if I stay on guard, if I don't let all my emotions go, then that's how I save this relationship. That's how I save me. But like I say in the top, in the title is save it and lose it, is that if you in a relationship, and you trying to save your heart? You trying to save yourself from heartbreak? Nine times out of ten, your relationship probably gonna end in heartbreak. Because you're you're doing so much to try to save your heart and protect your heart from heartbreak that you end up getting your heart broke. Because you weren't vulnerable. Or or that person leaves might leave or break up with you because they're like, man, you ain't vulnerable enough. You ain't open enough. But the the, the real thing in a relationship is that. Hey, I'm so vulnerable that I open myself up for, to the opportunity for love. But also when I open myself up for the opportunity of love, I know I open myself up for the opportunity of heartbreak. 
But but because we trying to save ourselves, a lot of us trying to save ourselves from heartbreak, we never give ourselves the opportunity to fall in love or to be in, in a healthy relationship because we think if I save my heart, then that'll prevent something going bad or going wrong in my relationship. But it's actually when you're vulnerable, it's actually when you're open, when you open up your heart and you put your heart at risk of being heartbroken, that many times that's when you find your true love, right? Um, even when we think about, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we, we like for my, myself with the NFL, I try to save myself from the fear. I try to save myself from failure. Right, I said this so many times, man. Uh, but if you knew, listening, right, when I was in college, I got an opportunity to work out with Patrick Peterson. If you know Patrick Peterson, Thorpe Award went at LSU, playing in the NFL, been in the league about 10 years. He played for the uh the uh Vikings now, right? So I had an opportunity to train. His dad hit my pastor up, pastor hit me up, hey, Pat wanna know if you wanna train. I'm like, nah, I'm good, I'm training on my own. Why did I do that? I was trying to save myself from failing in front of him and all the other NFL players that he was working out with. I was trying to save myself. And while I was trying to save myself, I lost out on the opportunity. I was trying to save myself from failure and I lost out on the opportunity because of the fear of failure, right? And so we got to understand that there are things in life that Yes, we need to save to protect. But then on the flip side, there are so much other so many other things that that we spend time trying to save that that the more we save it, the more we're at risk of losing it. Right? And so like I say saving can cost us. I missed out on the opportunity because I was trying to save myself from fear failure. Some of us miss out on opportunities because you're trying to save yourself from embarrassment. You're like, nah, you know, like, everybody like, man, hey, you can sing, get up there and sing, but you're like, nah, I don't, I'm embarrassed, I don't want to go. Like, so you're trying to save yourself from embarrassment, protect yourself from embarrassment, and when you do so, you lose out on opportunity. You don't know who was in that crowd. You don't know what producer, what uh, record label might have been in that crowd that you had the opportunity to sing in front of, but you said you were trying to save yourself from embarrassment, so you lost your opportunity. I know, I know, well, I don't know. I have a good inclination that because I tried to save myself from failure, that I missed out on the opportunity when I got drafted. When, when it was my turn to get drafted, I think because I tried to save myself from a fear of failure a couple years, uh, a couple years before, I believe I missed out on the opportunity when it came time for me to uh, to enter the draft, right? Because I thought I was saving myself from failing in front of them, but I, but but what I did was I lost the opportunity, right? And so what I'm trying to tell you is that there are some things in your life where you shouldn't try to protect. You shouldn't try to save it. Like, if God is telling you, uh, uh, hey, I need you to do this, or here's an opportunity, don't try, don't hold yourself back because, hey, I don't wanna, I wanna save myself from failure. I wanna save myself from being critiqued. I wanna save myself from being um, embarrassed. I wanna save myself from being in an uncomfortable. There are sometimes, like, we try to save ourselves from being in an uncomfortable, uncomfortable situation, but that uncomfortable situation is there for you to develop and grow. And if you continue to save yourself from entering uncomfortable situations, now you lose out on opportunities to grow. Like, real talk. Real talk. Like, even in my life, I look, I'm like, man, like, oh man, that was an opportunity. I avoided it. I tried to save myself, protect myself, but I end up hurting myself. Right? Even when you look at the Bible, bruh. It's, it's, it's clear as day, like the Bible even talking about, talks about how, uh, in Matthew, it talks about how if, if a man saves, or a person saves his, try to save his life, right, he will, he will ultimately lose it, right? But 
God, by, Jesus is saying, hey, but if you lose your life, then you'll gain eternal life. You'll actually gain it. Right? And so, in life, that's how we really are, though. Like, my pastor, uh, growing up, Pastor Davis, he, he talked about it like this. He was like, man, everybody want God to be, you know what I'm saying, their savior. Like, who don't want God to be their savior? Like, God, protect me. Keep me safe when I'm traveling. Protect me. Keep me healthy. Keep my family safe. Like, we all want God to be our savior. We all want to be saved. Okay, we can't, we can't save ourselves. We ain't got no superpowers. We can't save ourselves, right? So we all want to be saved, but not everybody wants God to be their Lord, right? Meaning that if you my Lord, I got to listen to you. I got to I gotta do your will. I got to be obedient. Uh, what up, coach? Hey, appreciate you, dog. Hey, I got I to gotta be obedient, but not everybody wants God to be their Lord. So the word, the Bible is telling us, hey, if you save your life, if you try to save your life, if you try to do your own thing on this earth, and try to live your own way, even though it looked like it may be working out, ultimately, you lose your life. You know what I'm saying? In a big grand scheme of things, right? The Bible talks about, you know what I'm saying, uh, paraphrasing it, but you know what I'm saying, what is a man to gain the whole world, but to lose his soul, right? So, it's you know what I'm saying? So, we gotta understand that there are some things in life that we trying to save that we don't need to save. And you think, if I save this particular thing, I'm actually protecting myself. But I'm telling you that if you save this particular thing, it can cost you, right? Also in the Bible, when we talk about the parable of the ten talents, right? Like, I encourage y'all, read that. Read that. Because many things, many things, obviously many things in the Bible, um, it, it, it relates to today, right? But read the parable of the ten, uh, ten talents. Right? The, the, I think the master, right? The particular person that was over these group of people gave all of them a certain amount of talents. And so the dude that got one talent was like, he was scared to lose it. So what he tried to do? What I said, I said, if we, if we don't want to lose something, we try to save it, right? So he said, I'm going to save this talent. So he hid it in the ground. Now everybody else that got talents, they went out and used and maximized their talents. But the one dude that got one decided to save his talent. And so when the, when the, when the boss, the master came back, he was like, yo, what you did with my talent? He was like, yo, I was so scared to lose this talent that I decided to save it. I decided to, to, to hide it, bury it in the ground. And guess what happened? He thought that if he saved it, he would have kept it. But because he saved it, he lost it. And so there are some talents that each and every one of y'all got some gifts. Like God has put books in y'all to write. God has put businesses in y'all to start. God has put so many amazing things in you. And you think that if I save this, like, hey, I'm waiting for the right time. The thing's got to be perfect. You know what I'm saying? I'm waiting for the right opportunity. I'm waiting till I got enough money. I'm waiting till I got the right material. I got the right. And don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you to rush things. But what I'm saying is, some of us, we're waiting for the ideal situation. Some of us, we're waiting for the perfect situation and we're saving the talent that God has given us. And the longer you save it, you run the risk of losing it. You run the risk. You can have all the talent in the world, but if, if God don't put the opportunities in front of you to, to, to use that talent, then you'll just have talent that's, that nobody knows about but you or your family, which is cool, right? But what if God wants you to be on a greater platform, but you keep saving that talent? Because you're like, oh, oh, oh God, I get, uh, you know, I got this talent. I'm trying to hide it. So I'm trying to tell you that don't sit up here and saving your talent. Use it. Maximize your talent. Saving it can cost you. So we got to understand that, yes, there are some things in life, yes, that, that we need to save. Right. There's some things in, in life that we need to uh, we need to protect. Um, but many things in life like are for us to be the best that we can be or for us to get the best out of a situation. We, we need to go ahead and be vulnerable and not try to protect ourselves, but to go ahead and take a risk. Um, and, and many times when you take that risk, yes, you open yourself up to potentially failing, but you also open yourself up 
for potentially succeeding, right? So, um, like Michael Jordan said, he missed every shot he never took. So, you missed every shot you never took. Think about in a, in a football game, a game, when the coach got timeouts. Oh, I'm trying to save my timeout. Save my timeout. What happens when the game over after they save it? They lose them. Game over, you lost it. You over here trying to save your timeouts when you should have took it to stop momentum. But because you're trying to save a timeout, you end up losing it. You got this great idea right now in your head. And you're trying to save it. You're waiting for the perfect time. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you to just rush and do anything. But, but you know that right now it's time to go. It's time to give it your all with whatever it is you got. That idea that's, that God has given you. That, that, that vision you got. It's time to give your all. And you keep trying to save it. And you can lose it. Like, I, I promise you. Like, most people don't know this. Right? So, if you follow me, you hear me say win. Win Pack Now. Win Pack Now was not the original name for win. Right? It was actually what's important now. Right? Which... I definitely love Win Pack Now way better. But the point is, right? I felt God telling me, hey, you need to get, hey, you need to turn that into an LLC. You need to turn that into an LLC. You need to turn it into an LLC. I, I knew, I, but I kept dragging my feet. I'm saving, I'm saving, I'm saving, I'm saving. I'm dragging my feet. And then all of a sudden, I had somebody contact me. It was like, man, you know, Jeremy, you're doing some great things in the community, man. I seen, I seen what's important now. You got this. I'm like, what? So they sent me the link. Somebody else, right, prominent figure too, right? So I didn't even do my right research on the first name. Prominent figure had what's important now. I was heartbroken. I'm like, I, man, my heart dropped in my heart. My Well, it's in my heart, but my heart dropped in my stomach, right? And I looked at my wife. I was like, yo, it's over. Because I thought, I was like, oh, because I'm like, everything tied to that name, when? Like, you know, the acronym when? Everything tied to it. And the lesson, it was a lesson and a blessing in it because the lesson was, God was like, yo, like, in other words, I gave you something. If you take too long to do it, I could take it from you. Or I can call somebody else to do what I called you to do. So I lost that name, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't mine anyways, but I had to change. But the blessing that came in, that I got a, I feel like I got a doper name, right? Um, that's bigger than me. But the point is, I try, I was saving it. I was procrastinating and I lost it. So, like I say, man, you might be in a relationship and you trying to save your heart in this relationship. Your, your significant other like, look, I need you to give me more. I need you to be more vulnerable. I need you to communicate. And you're like, no, no, I got to protect my heart. I got an icebox where my heart used to be. Right? And I'm trying to tell you, the more you try to protect your heart, the greater chance you got of losing that person because you're trying to save your heart because you think that's what's going to protect the relationship. When in other, But the fact is, when you're vulnerable and you open up, that's when you got the greatest chance for your relationship succeeding because now you and that significant other, your significant other, your spouse, whoever, now y'all have a greater chance of connecting on a deeper level and growing a deeper foundation. All right? So, man. Also, same thing with finances. Money. Like, nobody wants to go back to where they once were. Right? And so many, sometimes I think we count the dollars. And we and we count dollars and we think that dollars um, dictate success. If I, if I, if that makes sense. And in some cases it could. Because you're like, you're looking at your money. Oh, I got this. I got this. But, you might be, say you, you, you might be, uh, every, after every check, you might end up getting down to $300 left. And you're like, man, I keep getting the $300, like what's going on? But in the past, you would get a three, get down to $300 and it was just you. You didn't have no house, you didn't have, uh, no other responsibility, you didn't have no business or nothing. You just kept getting down to $300 when it was just you. And so now that you keep getting down to three hundred dollars, you still think you where you once were, but now you got to look in the mirror and think about your life and say, you know what? I keep getting down to three hundred dollars, but man, I paid my mortgage, 
I got a mortgage now. I got I got a car. I got a whole I got a whole family. I got a business. Yeah, I keep getting down to the same right amount. Right now I am. But look at all the other things that I'm able to do prior to getting down to this amount. So don't run from empty. Don't don't run from empty. My athletes, we know you know what I'm talking about. Don't run from empty. When we got conditioning, what we try to do is we try to save our oxygen so we don't get tired. If we got 2110s, we like, okay, I got 20, I'm gonna pace myself because I don't wanna get empty. I don't wanna get tired. But I remember talking to my homeboy, Nick D. When I was doing the conditioning test, right? To go to the Arizona Rattlers. We had to, we had to do two 300s. We was like, bro, we had a conversation. I remember it. He said, we was talking, we was like, bro, you're going to get tired. So since you're going to get tired, you might as well give it all you got. Right? And the thing is, is that it's not if you're going to get tired. That, that's inevitable. You're going to get tired. But how far can you get? Before you get tired. That's that's the key. And the further you're able to go without getting tired is the sign that you're improving. Even though you keep getting to the same amount of money after every check, you're like, dang, when I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be saving. Even though you get to the same amount of money after, at, after every check, after everything you pay, you got to look and say, though I'm getting to the same place as I was two years ago, I'm doing more with my money. And that's a sign that I'm growing. That's a sign that, that I'm succeeding because though I may keep getting to the same place, I'm doing more and I'm able to do more prior to getting here, which lets me know that I have made improvement. I have succeeded. I have excelled. I have went to another level. All right. So, uh, man, I wonder who on um, Facebook, man. Y'all go ahead, drop your names in the chat, man. Those on Facebook, man. Um, but yeah, so that's what I got, man. Save it, save it and lose it, man. Like save it and lose it. Like we're we gotta understand, like we only could control so much in our lives. Uh, we are not God, uh, and so. At the end of the day, whether it's whether it's our heart that we're trying to save, whether we're trying to save ourselves from embarrassment, whether we're trying to save ourselves from uncomfortable situations, that we got to understand that there are some things, there are some places, there are some times where that God really, he puts us uh, in certain situations um, for reasons, for us to grow, for us to develop. For us to take advantage of that opportunity, of that time. Uh, and, and if we step in and try to save ourselves from it, thinking that that's what's best, we can ultimately or actually lose or miss out on the opportunity to grow. On the, we can miss out on the opportunity. We can miss out on what it is that God um, ultimately wanted us to get from that time or opportunity or situation all right so um man you know what i'm saying definitely want to you know open it up about a minute or two for the tell them kellum portion um anybody got any questions or comments i see my boy coach uh codera got on here man um and i appreciate him man appreciate you man uh getting on uh you know just want to allow anybody to ask any questions that they might have uh, feel free um, to, you know, ask whatever you want to ask. And, uh, you know, if not, you know, I'll go ahead and, and wrap it up, man. And, um, and and just close out the show. And so, um, basically, as I do that, anybody got any questions, comments, you can do that as I close, man. So, basically, to really, really um, sum up uh, this particular, uh, to sum up this particular episode, man, which today I tackled save it and lose it. Um, just letting you know that there are some things in life that we shouldn't save, right? Um, there are some things that, there are some times in life where we must take the risk. And when we save ourselves or we try to prevent ourselves or we don't take the risk, we actually lose out, 
rather than saving ourselves, right? So um, just understand that, man. Know when God um, wants you to actually save some. Um, know when he actually is saying, hey, take the risk. Um, invest. Do this. Take this opportunity. Put yourself in this uncomfortable situation um, because ultimately um, he wants you to grow or develop uh, from it or be better uh, for it and from it, man. So, man, I hope everybody, man, is safe out there. I know it is snowed out. Um, out there for real um, and so man everybody be safe be warm man hey continue to wake up strive to win on purpose be intentional about winning man y'all have a blessed day and I see y'all next Thursday man for Taco Thursday with JK another episode of the podcast alright now